After the last video on the BF-109, a lot of people asked me what aircraft I was going to do a variance guide on next. As you can see, they all said the FW-190. I wish I could say wolf. What did he say? But the YouTube algorithm has already targeted me before, so I'll stick to the FW-190. It took to the western skies in 1941 and was instantly better than the Spitfire Mark V, panicking the Allies. The subsequent versions improved the already great fighter to the differing needs as the war progressed. Not as many variants as the BF-109, but there are still five to choose from. Two collectibles and three from the Kiban, Normandy and Bottom Platter DLCs. As with the BF-109, there are many characteristics that you should know about. It rolls very quickly and has the ability to trim the elevators. Also, the tailwheel is released when travelling at a certain low speed and when the elevators are in the flat position. To lock the wheel on takeoff and landing, pull back on the stick so as to not to lose control of the aircraft. The FW-190 also suffers from no pre-buffeting before stalling, which means if you're not careful, you'll put the aircraft into a spin in tight turns. This is deadly if you have not flown the aircraft for long, so try to get used to how tight you can turn at certain airspeeds and altitude. Ooh. The FW-190A3 starts with two MGs in the nose and two times MG-151 20mm cannons in the wing. It can be equipped with bombs and additional MG FG 20mm cannons for more firepower. This plane absolutely dominated the skies above Stalingrad as I found out in my career mode. Nothing really competes with the plane. As long as you don't make mistakes, it's hard to get killed in an FW-190A3. The FW-190A5 has the same armaments option but also includes the addition of two MG-151 gun pods under the wing or two times MG FG 20mm cannons in the wing. A new modification is the U-17 Strike modification, which adds a modified engine, additional armour plates and underwing bomb racks for 50kg bombs. The engine is fully automated, so you don't need to fiddle around with mixture or superchargers as they do it by themselves. The FW-190A6 is the same as the A5 for the most part, apart from two additional 20mm cannons for a grand total of four cannons as standard, and the different modification packages that can be installed. The A6 Sturmjäger G3 Strike modifications, the G3 and R5 is pretty much the same as the G. It is all a little confusing, but basically, for attacking ground targets, I only use the A6 Sturmjäger, as it offers the best protection against enemy ground fire. The FW-190A8 is a real bomber killer, gaining access to 2x30mm cannons in the wing that can shred bombers to pieces, as I found out in my Normandy career mode. They are better as fighters or bomber killers than ground attack in my opinion. It still comes with optional bombs and some Jaeger modification, which helps against enemy bombers crude MGs firing at you. I cannot stress how fun it is to fly this aircraft against unprotected bombers or lone fighters. The FW-190D9 is the last variant and made specifically to counter high altitude bombers. With a new engine to improve high altitude performance, Yuma's 213A1, it was able to compete with the P-51 Mustang at height. The engine has a water methanol injection system so that the engine doesn't end itself if pushed too hard in emergency mode. It can also be equipped with bombs and the new R4M rockets, a more streamlined version of the WGR-21 rockets. It can also be equipped with a new gyro gun sight for accurate deflection shooting. And that is all the variants of the FW-190. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and comment any questions you have down below.